You've heard it here. The old way of marketing is dead. The old way of marketing is dead. Now, why do I say that? Well, it's all based on some of the stuff that we're learning about the human brain. And uh, in today's day and age, and welcome, everybody. tell me where you're from. We're talking about the uh, old way of marketing is dead. And if you're not going to do what I'm about to suggest, uh, start winding down your business. Uh, I'll tell you why. When you analyze how much content is being created by influencers every single minute of every single day, how much new content AI is creating on behalf of influencers and experts, the average person who's doing general marketing will not survive. Now, I want to explain this to you just so you understand. Hey, Mike. Hey there, Don. When we're dealing with an environment, whether it's the internet, uh, whether it's your local newspapers, whether it's regular newspapers, whether it's YouTube, there are literally billions and billions of new marketing pieces, messages, ads, videos for people to sift through. And there's something called attention blindness. And what happens in neuromarketing and neuroselling, which is what I teach all my business clients, is when people are getting overwhelmed with information, written information, auditory information, visual information, and they have endless streams, okay, of choices, attentional blindness kicks in. Now, what is attentional blindness? Obviously, the word says it all, all right? And so attentional blindness is when they're blind to giving you their attention. Why? Because everything looks like the same old thing. Now, I just taught a, a course on artificial intelligence and how to use artificial intelligence to uh, a group of business owners. And you can create, for example, a blog post in less than one minute, that's 700 words to 1500 words. You can create a video outline for YouTube in 30 seconds. You can create a website, a workbook, a manual, PowerPoint slides, literally in minutes now. So what does that mean? It means that everybody's gonna be doing it who at least is using those tools, right? So what does that mean as far as neuroscience and neuromarketing? It means that you have to be smarter than the average bear. Now, a way to be smarter than the average bear in marketing is to understand how is information processed? Whoops, I broke my brain. How is information processed in the human brain, right? When, when information comes in through the eyes or in through the ears, okay, where do you think it goes for processing first? Wouldn't it make sense to understand that if you're marketing the old way, you're not going to get people's attention. And if you're not going to get people's attention, then you're not going to be able to lead them, okay, to know you, trust you, and like you. You're not going to be able to lead them into phase one, phase two, phase three of a selling process. Fundamentally, does that make sense, first and foremost? And let me say hi to you, Shannon. Hi, Jake. And hi, Sherry Cow. Does that make sense to you fundamentally that in this world of attention blindness, okay, and scotomas, there's another Latin word called scotomas, which means blind spots. Whenever we see tons and tons and tons and tons of information, we just become blind to it. Now, what do we need to do based on how the brain processes information? Should we be marketing to somebody's logical brain, the cortexes? Should we be marketing to somebody's emotional brain, the neocortex? Should we be marketing to somebody's reptilian brain? Which one should we do if we want to stand out from the crowd? Which one should we be doing? Marketing has fundamentally changed as of the last eight months. So Lori Joy says emotional brain. Hi there, Kavita. Right? Which one should we be marketing to? Let me know on Instagram. Right, we're talking about, okay, old ways of marketing is dead. So Mike says the emotional brain, right? I'm going to tell you something a little bit differently. Wherever possible, whenever possible, think about this. 
about 400 billion bits of information is coming in through your eyes and ears at any given time. 400 billion bits of information. It goes into a place in the brain called the thalamus, and that's the thalamus is a relay station. All the visual information that comes in goes to the occipital lobe for processing. All of the auditory goes to the ox, to the auditory lobes for processing. All the kinesthetic uh, information comes into the kinesthetic. But pay attention to what I'm about to say. Based on the evolution of our species, humankind, all right, think about what is the number one priority of every human brain. Every brain functionally works the same. There are art brains that work differently. It's like Electric cars functionally work the same. Gas cars functionally work the same. Camels functionally work the same, right? But when we're talking about the old way of marketing is dead, I want you to pay attention because we have billions of messages a day. So uh, who said survival? Kiera says survival above all else. So the number one priority of the brain, right, is to make sure that it assesses information at a subconscious level for our survival first, right? What is next? What is next? Survival first, what is next? Nope, not belonging. What is next? Survival and safety, right? So pay attention. If you have a product that will help somebody with survival or safety, you have to actually market, not the survival and safety part of it. You have to market Okay, the polar opposite of that thing. So if your marketing, okay, is focusing on survival and safety, but that's what you're using to market, you're missing the whole point of how you get people's attention first. So you want to be focusing on what could happen to that person if they don't have your program products and what is the cost to them? Life might be on the line. Their safety or their family's safety might be on the line. So let's say you're, um, you teach people martial arts for safety. Should you be marketing martial arts for safety or should you be marketing don't allow a perpetrator or don't allow somebody to attack you, okay, where they could harm you or your family? Which do you think is going to get people's attention more? who are concerned about survival and safety. Survival and safety is the outcome they want, but what they want to move away from, okay, is a perpetrator in a dark alley or at a bar or a restaurant or a parking lot doing what? Killing them, threatening them, injuring them, maiming them. The new marketing, okay, that you're going to be seeing a lot of because of the amount of information people are receiving is around, okay, what I call is neuromarketing and neuroselling. So survival and safety first, but then what is the third most important part of the human brain? Okay, what is it trying to do? It's a, it's a biocomputer. If you took away my glasses, my hair, my face, my skill, remove my, 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 um, my skull, all you'd have is this organism that's processing information and survival, safety, and security are right up there with oxygen for it okay creativity no 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 that's not not even close but when we are okay fearful of any type of pain or when we are in pain imagine a back injury so imagine an ad do you want to be healthy and vibrant and energetic one ad Okay, or do you want to get rid of the pain that you have in your back that's preventing you from having the energy and the vitality that you want? Which ad do you think will get more attention? Which language pattern do you think will get more attention? Okay, feel great or stop the pain that's stop, stop the pain, eliminate the pain that's preventing you from feeling great. Which one do you think will grab somebody who's scrolling on social media's attention? An image of somebody holding their back, which is how they feel, okay? Or an image of being healthy and, vi and, uh, and having vitality again. Holistic health and well-being, your answer is incorrect. It's not vitality. We move away from pain 100 times faster than we move towards pleasure and what we want. 
Let me repeat that. We move away from pain a hundred times faster than we move towards the, the pleasure or the gain that we want. Why do you think chiropractors, for example, the ones that promote preventative chiropractic, most of them don't have thriving businesses. And the ones that are there to eliminate, alleviate, get rid of pain, do very, very well in their marketing. I'm talking about in their marketing. For those of you that just joined, I'm talking about the old way of marketing is dead. When you understand how the brain processes information, all right, it's traveling through the eyes, through the ears, okay, um, as you're reading or watching, and your brain is analyzing, okay, every word at 400 billion bits per second or every visual stimuli at 400 billion bits per second, and it sends the messages to the right place for processing based on will this thing help me stay alive? Will this keep me secure? Will this move me away from the pain I'm in? Does that make sense? So we're actually marketing to the instinctual brain first, wherever we can. Then we market to the emotional brain. Okay, then we market to the emotional brain. And when we market to the emotional brain, if we want to market to the instinctual and the emotional brain, we want to know what are, pay attention to what I'm about to say, what are the prospects, the person who is your best prospect? Write this list out. What are their biggest current pains right now? What are they in pain about? What do they worry about might be a pain in the future? Then what do they fear right now? What is the biggest fear they have right now? Do they fear they're going to be unloved? Do they fear they might be embarrassed or ashamed or ridiculed or judged? Do they fear they're not going to have enough money? Do they fear they're going to be unhealthy enough to take care of themselves? Do they fear that they're not going to have enough for retirement? What do they fear right now? So when we're marketing the new way, we have to market to the way their brain processes information. If we don't do it that way, we don't stop the scroll. We don't get people to pay attention to us instead of the other content, whether it's social media content or TikTok content, right? Um, and yeah, I know we, we go to TikTok for fun stuff and we can go to LinkedIn for serious stuff. Uh, but if we're going to YouTube, we're going for how-to stuff. But when people are looking for information that they need right now, when we're marketing, I'm talking about marketing, forget about selling for now, but when we're marketing, we wanna understand their biggest pains, fears, frustrations right now, what's irritating them right now, what are their wants, needs, and aspirations. And when your marketing follows that arc of pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations, now you're activating all three layers of the human brain, the instinctual, the limbic, and the neocortex, which is the logical part of the brain, the imagination part of the brain. Does that make sense so far? Why am I talking about the old way of marketing is dead if you're a business owner? Because a lot of business owners think that it's facts and figures that, that make people look at them and buy them. A lot of people think that you know it's success stories alone that get them to look at your program, product, or service. But if you're thinking about marketing, think about neuromarketing because you are marketing to the human brain. And if you're marketing to the human brain, there's a very specific order in which information travels into the brain and through the brain. And there's certain circuits that get activated based on languages that you use, language patterns you use, images that you use, okay, before and after pictures that you use. There's very, very specific pathways that when you understand how to activate those circuits, we have three core networks, salience, default mode network, and the executive functioning network. But those circuits, okay, don't usually talk to each other at the same time. One is usually on or the other, not at the same time, but uh, those networks, excuse me, but the circuits, you can activate those circuits with words. I shared this yesterday. I want you to um, think about this. Jumping out of a plane. Snake. Spider. 
seeing somebody's throat slit and the blood squirting right out. A beautiful beach with rolling water and a gentle breeze and the sun warm on your face. Somebody coming up behind you, putting a bag over your head and putting your head in your you can't, talk to you can't breathe. In less than one minute, I activated three different circuits in your brain, depending on whether you're afraid of snakes or spiders, whether you're afraid of jumping out of a plane, whether you're afraid of somebody coming behind you and, 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 and attacking you. So understand that the old way of marketing, the first thing you have to do is get attention, don't you? The first thing you've got to do is get attention. So how are you going to get attention with your words? How will you get attention with the images used? How will you get attention with the videos and the first line and sentence of what you say? If you don't learn this, you're probably a statistic in business. So when we're talking about neuromarketing and neuroselling, if we have to, activate the awareness, the pay attention circuit in somebody's brain, does your marketing do it? Does your, what you say, does it do that? Are you spending time understanding who is your ideal client? What's the avatar? Male, female, heterosexual, bisexual, uh, trans, like what's, what's the profile? HR director, what are his or hers or their biggest pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations? If you don't know that and you don't have marketing to get their attention and then show them how your program, product, service, or thing can help them move away from the things they want to move away from and move towards what they want to move towards and do it in a way that does this. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. Don't make them think. Don't make them think. Why? Why, why shouldn't I make somebody think? Because the number three priority of the brain is energy conservation. So if you're making me think, I'm gone. I don't want to think. Now, don't confuse thoughts with thinking. Don't confuse thoughts with thinking. We have 6,200 thoughts, 6,200 thoughts a day, okay? And people rarely would rather die than think. So don't make me think. What does that mean in marketing, the new marketing? Lay the path out for me that is so easy for me to follow, it's easy for me to do. As soon as your marketing or selling is hard for people to do, they're out, they're gone. They don't have the attention units to process information, to think about it and make a decision. So all the marketing that you do right now, all the marketing you do right now, you should ask yourself, is it clear and easy for the prospect to watch, to listen, to take the small action steps I want him or her to take? Is it easy? Right? Now, if we're doing neuro marketing and neuro selling, we have to learn how to activate deliberately the stress center of the brain. And then we have to actively move them through, okay, the dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, the feel-good neurochemicals around your program, product, or service. And that requires understanding how do I get, how do I put together a proper process that makes it easy for them to know me, trust me, and like me, to know that they're in the right place, and to know what to do next. Does this make sense? And thank you, Shannon. Hey, Yuri, nice to see you here. Love your posts, right? So does it make sense that if you are marketing the old way, you're not going to be able to get people's attention. You're not going to be able to really lead them through a path that's just easy for them to know what to do next. So if you don't take the time to develop a roadmap, like a step-by-step -step process of watch this, then do this, listen to this, then do this, read this, then do this. It makes it hard for them 
to understand what to do next because naturally we are lazy because we don't want to use glucose. The most important um, um, thing to the human brain is energy, glucose. So if you're making me think, you're making it hard. If you're making it hard, I'm leaving to go somewhere else. Why do you think people scroll? They're scrolling to see, okay, something that's just easy for them to consume. So is your marketing easy to consume? Are your steps easy for people to follow so that they can do the final part of it when they're ready that you can lead them to is make an emotional decision that then they logically will buy into because they have to fulfill that loop in the brain. So when we're marketing, we're marketing to the reptilian instinctual brain, we're activating the emotional brain before we get into the logical conclusion of making a sale. If you think people buy based on facts and figures and logic, you're making the biggest mistake in the world in marketing. All marketing is emotional response marketing if you do it right. All marketing is emotional response marketing if and when you do it right. So the whole idea around neuromarketing and neuro selling is you deliver content, whether it's a, a meme, whether it's a, um, a, um, um, a, a written you know, blog, whether it's a question, whether it's a video, whether it's auditory, when you do it the right way and you create what I call our micro commitments along the way, then you are much more likely to make it easy for people to pay attention to number one, right? And then build trust and rapport with you because they start to believe you and trust you based on the value that you're bringing them in bite sizable chunks. If this makes sense, let me know in the chat, please. All right, I've been teaching neuromarketing, neuro selling for, for many, many years. You know, our students generate millions of leads, billions in sales a year because they're following a proven model based on neuroscience and neuropsychology. And so many of you know, um, if I may, tomorrow I am doing my final business breakthrough challenge of the year. And um, several times a year, I do a business breakthrough challenge, and it's starting tomorrow at 9 a.m., and we'll go for two hours a day for the general admission and four hours for five days for our uh, VIPs. And if you want to get more clients, more leads, more sales, more revenue, I guarantee you this will be the best training you've had all of this year. In day one, which is tomorrow, I am going to show you how to go deeper into unleashing the power of neuromarketing. I'm going to show you how to create on day two your avatars, the people that are most likely to buy what you have, and how to create what I call our irresistible offers, which are offers they can't say no to. On day three, I will show you how to use a variety of artificial intelligence tools to create your website, your content, your blogs, your videos. Um, and I'll show you how to be more productive uh, on day number three using AI tools. On day four, I will show you a step-by-step -step process from lead generation to lead qualification to lead conversion to lead nurturing that is responsible for over $5 billion in sales by small business owners. And then day five, I'm going to do something that every one of us needs more of, and that's how to win the inner game. How do you win the inner game? How do you get off of you not feeling you're worthy enough or good enough or successful enough to achieve the success you want? How do you get rid of the limiting beliefs? How do you get rid of fear and turn it into your fuel for success? So if you want to join me for the Business Breakthrough Challenge, it's five days. Um, it's $47 for five days of training with me, which is very, very minuscule compared to the $10,000 an hour I charge my clients to work privately with me. Um, on Instagram, there's information in the bio. You know what to do with it. Uh, on Facebook, which I'm on as well, there'll be a link that my team will put in the, um, uh, in the chat. And if you want some real training to grow your business and have your best year ever in 2024, if you're ready to you know, really put together a process and a system 
that will ensure you have more leads and more sales than ever before, join me for the challenge. There's always a full money back guarantee. I take all the risk all the time. Um, so if you're serious about business growth and you want to achieve success faster and easier, um, I think my track record of building five multi-million dollar businesses uh, speaks for itself. But more importantly than that, I've taught it to over 25,000 small business owners. So on Instagram, go to my bio. You'll see the link there. Click on the link. It'll take you to the page. And on Facebook, we'll put the link you know, in the chat for you. And um, this is the final one of the year. So if you're ready to make 2024 the best business year of your life, I will see you tomorrow. We're starting at 9 o'clock Pacific time, which is 12 o'clock in New York and five o'clock in London. All right. So today we've talked about why Nancy, I look forward to seeing you there. Awesome, Nancy. Uh, Shannon, I'll see you uh, there as well. And um, the investment is minuscule compared to the benefits you're going to get. You're going to get at minimum 10 hours of training with me. Um, and if you're in the VIP, you're going to get 20 to 25 hours of training with me over the next week or so. And uh, if you want the, um, the real truth of what it's going to take to build your business, so it's actually a business that works for you, then I will see you there. All right. Have a great afternoon. I appreciate you all. And um, let's keep chugging along. And let's highly make, you know, highly, you know, um, let, let's, let, let's make business success a lot easier. Uh, too many businesses have a lot of potential, but the business owners don't know how to market and sell uh, without being salesy, right? And so there you go. Have a great day, afternoon, morning or evening. Chanisu, we will see you there. And Maria, thank you. Great to, uh, great to see you here as well. Thanks, everyone. Have an awesome afternoon or night or morning, depending on where you are in the world.